And now let's talk about the parts of the electric guitar. I'm going to start with the basics. And these, of course, are the strings. Um, and the strings, we actually tune them with these, which are called tuners. In this case, I have uh, locking tuners, which actually allow me to cut off the string completely and uh, minimize the amount of uh, tuning uh, irregularities. I just think they're a little more accurate. So in this case, we have locking tuners. Moving down the strings, we actually come to the area. This is called the nut. In this case, I have a graphite nut. Um, as we move down the neck, these metal things, they're called frets, and they allow you to shorten the length, length ostensibly shorten the length of the string, and placing your finger down in certain positions, the shortening of the strings changes the pitch. And that way you can actually combine and create melodies and chords and create different pitches and play them together or separately. A lot of times frets have markers on them and typically you know you'll find them on the third, fifth, the seventh, the ninth and the twelfth fret. As you can see this guitar goes way up to something like 22 frets whereas most acoustic guitars will stop around 12 and then it becomes a little more physically difficult to get higher. Moving along, we're going to get down to this area here called the bridge, and um, these are called saddles. Now, these are sometimes adjusted to fine-tune the instrument. Uh, this is something you should probably get done when you first buy the instrument. It's a process called intonation, which just basically fine-tunes the tuning on your instrument. In this case, on this guitar, we have something called a whammy bar, or uh, more traditionally known as a tremolo, and that allows you to add a little bit of tremolo to your chord or whatever melody you might be playing. Tremolo bar. Here we have the input, which is where you plug your guitar cable or chord. Um, moving along here, we have these little things, which we call pickups. Now here we have what's called a pickup selector switch. Um, in this case, there are five different positions, and each of these five different positions allows you to select a different configuration of these, what we call pickups. Uh, the result is that it's a different sound. Um, it goes from sort of darker or a little fatter when we're in this position to brighter, uh, sort of a little twangier in that position. This first position one selects this pickup. Position two selects both of these pickups. Position three just selects the middle one. Position four selects these two. And then the last pickup selector uh, position will se uh, select this pickup. So essentially this pickup selector allows you to range in tones from dark and fat to bright and twangy. Now we're going to talk a little bit about pickups. In this case, the pickups that are on this guitar, which is a Stratocaster style guitar, are called single coil. Without getting into too many details, there are two uh, options that you usually have or either single coil, as we have here, or if they look a little squarer, sometimes uh, you might have what's called a humbucker. Now the, the difference sonically is that humbuckers might sound a little louder, a little fatter. Single coil, as we have here, are sort of very thin with less output, a little twangier, a little brighter. Um, it's just a question of personal preference. Both are really great sounding pickups. In addition, we have tone controls, and again, you might find different configurations of tone controls and volume controls based on the instrument that you have. In this case, I have two volume controls and one tone control. Um, usually there's, there's a volume and two tone controls. In my case, I've had some custom work done. Usually just a volume and tone and tone would be the standard setting. 
Now, if we take a look right here, we'll see a little hole at the top of the neck. This is called the truss rod adjustment area. Now, I would advise you when you first get your guitar to make sure that it's set up correctly. Usually, the place at which you purchase your guitar will have a technician and they'll set the action on your guitar. Now, by the action, I mean the height of the strings. What the truss rod adjustment does is it controls the bow and an effect, in, in effect, the height of the strings above the fretboard. That makes it physically easier to play. A guitar with low action will have low strings. A guitar with higher action, well, you'd have to press a little bit harder. So the truss rod adjustment is used in combination with the saddle fine tuning when you first get your guitar and your technician sets it up. So I would, I would uh, recommend, if you can, a professional setup. Now, usually on many of the Strat style guitars, we call this, this style of guitar, it's a Fender Stratocaster, affectionately called a Strat, you'll find what's called a pick guard. Now the pick guard covers the wood and again pr protects it because sometimes when you're playing, often you hit. So you'll find some pick guards that are pretty worn. Um, in the cases where there's no pick guard, pick guard, you'll find the wood quite worn from, from playing. And that's it for the parts of the guitar.